Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my November stats wrap up for you. I'm just gonna get into it. November was a relatively slow reading month. I had a couple of assignments to do and so that did eat into my reading time. So I finished six books in the month of November from six different authors. It's not a terrible amount to have read. I am in progress of quite a few others. If you've seen my December TBR, <laughs> it's largely made up of books that are on my currently reading shelf. Now actually, three of these were mentioned in that video as ones that were ongoing at the time of filming that, which was a few days before the end of November. And actually in December I have already finished one more from that video, so I'm making progress. I just keep adding more to it rather than like finishing them but some of that is to do with like finishing books for uni and that sort of thing. Anyway, I finished six books, six different authors. The total number of pages of the books that I finished was 2,154 so that was down a little bit from October but as I say that's because I've got a lot of books that are ongoing. The average book length was 359 pages which is up a bit from October. Although I read less books they tended to be slightly longer books which is good. All of the books were under 500 pages so I earned one pound per book for all of those books for my book buying. So I bought three books in November. I started off November with £13.36 in my book buying budget. I bought three books. So the first book I bought was called Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie. I actually have left my copy at uni because I am currently at home for the Christmas holidays so I don't have that one to show you. That one cost me £2.35. It's the next book in the Tommy and Tuppence series by Agatha Christie that I have to read so I'm looking forward to picking that one up relatively soon. The next book I bought was this one Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. I've already started reading this so this has been mentioned in my December TBR because I've read like just a few pages of it. This one cost me £4 and I bought this because I'm buddy reading it with my friend although neither of us have got very far with it yet. And then the third book that I bought was Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson and this one cost me £7.33 because although I bought it new I used student discount to get a little bit of money off the price. This is the book that inspired the film and I watched the film earlier this year and have wanted to read the book ever since. That took me slightly over budget. I was left with minus 32 pence but as I said I read six books in November so that leaves me at the start of December with a balance of £5.68 in my book buying budget and because it's now getting close to Christmas I'm not actually going to be buying any books in December so that will probably roll over to January and I don't know whether I'll buy any books in January because I think I've got a couple of pre-orders due out in February so I want to make sure I've got enough in the budget to account for them. I did actually, saying that, I did buy one more book in November which I'm not sure where it is at the moment but I mentioned a few times on my channel that this year I've been recovering from PTSD following a car accident I had last November and because it was my crash anniversary in November because I needed a bit of a boost on that day to help me get over that and also I think I handed in an essay on the same day and so I was just a bit drained. So I did buy The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson as well. I'm not sure where that is at the moment because I haven't completely unpacked from my journey home yet. So that was a special extra treat for me <laughs> because I needed cheering up which like as a one-off to buy myself a book, yeah, I'm okay with that. Anywho, the longest book that I finished in November was Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. This was 496 pages, so there were a couple of books that were just shy of 500 pages and it's slightly frustrating, this was one of them, but yeah, this was a really good book. And then the shortest book that I finished was We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay, which I finished on the 30th of November, so I just finished it in time to be included. And this was one of the ones I mentioned in that currently reading TBR video. And so this was 218 pages. Although I read less books, the books that I finished generally were longer. In terms of publication date, the book that was published the first was The Loving Cup by Winston Graham, which is the 10th Poldark novel. This was published in 1985. So that was one book published in the 20th century and the rest were all published in the 21st century. And then the book that was published most recently. So I read two books that were published in 2020, but the one that was more recent of those was Ray Bearer by Jordan Lefico. Half-Life by Lillian Clark was also published this year. So I gave three books four stars and three books five stars. So it was a really solid reading month. I really enjoyed everything that I read and actually the four stars were mainly quite good four stars. Really enjoyed everything I read. The book that 
I read the quickest was Half-Life by Lillian Clark. This one took me three days to read. I raced through it because I really, really enjoyed it. And the book that took me the longest to read was Saving Lucas Biggs by Marissa de los Santos and David T. This was another one that I mentioned in that currently reading video because I started this in September. It was the group book for the Voltathon Readathon. I started this in September and basically had no time to read it. So when I actually did sit down and read it, it literally took me like two days. But I read the first chapter in September and then didn't read anymore until the end of November. So it came out as being 68 days. That gave me an average reading length of 26 days, which considering how long a couple of the books have been on my currently reading shelf is not too bad. It's a bit longer than the ones that I finished in October, but hopefully if I finish some more of those ones in December that are on my currently reading shelf, that number is gonna be really a lot higher <laughs> probably for my December stats. And then the length of time on my TBRs, two of the books I started reading pretty much as soon as I got them, which were Saving Lucas Biggs and We Need to Talk About Race. I started both of those, I think, on the day that I got them. The book that had been on my TBR the longest was The Loving Cup, which had been on there for 1,176 days. So again, that's pretty long. It's not one of the books that have been on my TBR the longest, but that is quite a long time. And I need to be working on getting some more of those books that have been on there longer read. So that gave me an average length on my TBR of 235 days, which again is not too bad. It's less than a year. I like like that number to be less than a year but as I say I do need to start working on some of those ones that have been on there a really long time and so that number is probably just gonna go up. So in terms of whether they're on my TBR or not three of the books were on my November TBR, one book was on my October TBR and then the other two weren't on a TBR at all or may have been on earlier TBRs. Where the books came from, the one book, the Poldark book, was from my own TBR. The rest of the books were all books that were new to me this year. One was for my birthday, the others were all ones I bought this year. I mean, a couple of them were new releases, but as I literally just said, <laughs> I need to start working on some of the books that have been on my TBR a really long time, rather than just reading new releases all the time, which is what I have felt like I've been doing this year. One book was a hardback, the rest were all paperbacks. In terms of genre, two were historical fantasies, one was straight historical fiction, one sci-fi, one fantasy, and one Christian non-fiction. Three of the books were for an adult audience, two were young adult, and one was a children's book. For publishers, two were from independent publishers, and then the rest were from Big Five publishers. Author nationalities, they were all British or American authors, but actually two of those American authors identify as American and something else. So there was one Arab American and one Nigerian American, and then two American authors and two British authors. I say two American authors. One of the books was written by two people, so that's technically three American authors, I guess. Anywho, in terms of author ethnicities, so there was an Arab American, one white American, one black African American, one white British, one book was written by multiple authors of different ethnicities, and one book was by a black British person. For author genders, there was one book by a trans man, two books by cisgendered women, two books by cisgender men and one book by multiple authors who are one cis man and one cis woman. So in terms of my challenges, two books counted towards the indie challenge and one book counted towards the start on your shelfathon, and those are the only challenges I met this month. I did have two books that I was going to read for read around the world and I didn't get to them. I'm hoping to try and get to them in December because then I will have read 12 books for that challenge this year which was my goal but whether I will get to them amongst everything else I'm planning to read, who knows. Also a couple of series I'm trying to catch up on in December as well so hopefully we'll get a few up to date for that too. For author diversity, four books were authored by someone from a marginalised ethnicity which is good. One book was from an author from the LGBTQIA plus community and one book the author has openly talked about their experience of mental illness. That was all the categories I could find that the authors had openly talked about from their author websites or Goodreads pages or their Twitter that I could find. In terms of character diversity I actually hit all the markers this month so that was marginalised ethnicity. Actually five out of the six books represented marginalised ethnicities in their characters. I mean one was non-fiction but it was about writing from a, the perspective of a black British person so I've included that. Two of the books featured LGBTQIA plus characters, three books featured characters with disabilities, two books had mental health rep and two books had neurodiversity rep so actually that is a really solid month in terms of that. That is all my stats. I know I said I've been saying that I need to get back into telling you how many books are on my TBR and 
whatnot and I just have not managed to get that up to date so I will try for the end of the year stats to be able to compare for you where my TBR is compared with where it was last year. I'm pretty sure it's gone up because I have stress bought a lot of books this year. I have read a lot as well though, I'm currently on, I think I've read 106 books this year, I'm just going to check on my Goodreads. Yeah so at the moment I've completed 106 books, last year I only read 101 books so this month I actually have exceeded what I read last year with still a month to go. So that's pretty good but I think I've probably bought more books <laughs> than I've read. I think the TBR number has probably gone up. I did unhaul quite a lot as well though, so I mean, we'll have to see. When I get back to college at the end of the Christmas window, I'll try and make sure everything is up to date on my Goodreads and on my spreadsheet so I've got a record of what I've bought because I've just completely lost track. Since moving, everything has just been all over the place. So hopefully my end of the year stats will be able to give you that information. On to my best and worst books of the month. Considering I gave all the books four or five stars, I don't think it's really fair to pick a worst book this month. The one book that I could have talked about, I didn't quite finish in time. I finished it like on the 1st of December. So we'll probably talk about that at the end of December for my least favourite book. For my favourite book, it was really hard because I gave three books five stars but I think just edging it out it's probably Ray Bearer by Jordan Nafuko. I really really enjoyed this book. I buddy read it with a few of my friends, booktuber friends and we all really enjoyed it. It was really interesting actually because we had just finished reading Incendiary which was our October book club pick and a lot of the similar themes come up in this book but from a different angle. The main character in both has the ability to do a kind of memory magic like stealing or taking people's memories and all of us felt like that aspect was done slightly better in this book. I really liked the main character Terry Sai. I liked the relationships that kind of got a found family storyline which is really really lovely. The ships didn't go the way you thought they were gonna go which was really nice too. There was briefly ace representation which I'm expecting will be developed more as books will go on. Just so much to love in this book, it was really well put together. The story, the plot was complex, the characters were complex and had really differing motivations and like particularly the main character had a lot of conflicting motivations, a lot of conflicting influences on her and to see how she tried to find her way through that was really really good. So much to love about this book. I'm really excited for the series to continue. Don't know when we're gonna get any more from this world but I can't wait to get back to it. Also I really love this cover and it was only like someone pointed out to me ages after I'd had the book that there's actually a face on the cover. <laughs> And usually I always see faces everywhere, even where there aren't faces. So I was really surprised that I missed that. But yeah, I really love the cover. I can't say enough good things about this book. I mean, it was a couple of weeks ago now that I finished it. So it's not as fresh in my memory as I would like. But yeah, really, really lovely, great book. Really highly recommended and definitely deserves a lot more hype than it has been getting. I don't, I think people have been sleeping on it a little bit. It's not been really widely hyped compared to some other YA books that have come out this year. If you enjoy young adult fantasy, this is inspired by a lot of African mythology. The world building is really good as well. There's quite a lot of different cultures represented and in a really sensitive and really, I thought it was done in a really nice way. So anyway, yeah, really do recommend this. So I think that's it for this video. Let me know some of what you've been reading in November, what, what were your favourites, have you read any of the books I've mentioned today and what you thought of them? So have a chat to me down in the comments. You can also like this video if you liked it and please subscribe if you haven't already and you can also follow me on my social media. All that information will be listed in the description box below for you so I'm on Twitter and on Instagram and on Goodreads. I'm not sure when this is going up but there's probably still going to be time to join in the Christmas readathon so I will link the videos for that as well for you and the Christmas readathon Twitter. It's a super chill readathon, just aim to enjoy reading over the festive period if you get time off work, if you get holidays, to just spend some of that time enjoying reading some th things. So I'm really looking forward to doing that, having some chill time. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye!